if you have very strong beliefs within you that you don't deserve good things in your life mm -hmm. and a lot of people have that then there can be delays and sometimes people say well affirmations don't work I've done them but it, when they're doing for instance prosperity affirmations and they've done some prosperity affirmations and they say it doesn't work nothing's happening and I say well alright how many prosperity affirmations did you do in a day and they'll say three probably mm -hmm. and they say alright how many poverty affirmations did you do this day and that could be 300 depending on where you're coming from and what are is running through your mind See, I have this, one of my thoughts about life is that only good lies before me. And I've been saying this for many years. So it doesn't really matter to me what happens in life because I know it's going to be good. Have a mind that is open to everything and attached to nothing. One of the central principles of my life is that no one knows enough to be a pessimist about anything and that each and every one of us when we close our mind to what is possible for us or what is possible for humanity closes off the genius that resides and lives in each and every one of us having an open mind doesn't necessarily mean uh, finding fault with all of the things that you've been taught by others it means opening yourself up to the potentiality and the possibility that anything and everything is possible. So having a mind that is open to everything and attached to nothing really means finding within ourselves the ability to get rid of a trait that I find so common in, contemporary, in the contemporary world. Do you know that most people that I meet spend their lives looking for occasions to be offended. They actually are ap out there hoping that they can find some reason to be offended. And there's no shortage of reasons. They're out there everywhere. The way this person dressed, the what the worst person said, they turn on their TV, they hear the news, they're offended by this, someone, didn't, uh, someone used language that they didn't like, someone doesn't share the same customs that you, and people all day long, in fact, if you keep track tomorrow, you will find uh, probably a hundred reasons that you can go around being offended. But a mind that is open to everything and attached to nothing is a mind that says, I'm never looking for anything to be offended by. And that whatever anybody else out there has to say, my response to that is, that's an interesting point of view. I've never considered that before. God says, you may not have anything you want. You may not have anything you want. And I was puzzled by that. And I said, you know, well, I don't understand. I thought that when you want something, when you need something, when you are hoping for something, you go to God and you ask for it. God says, no, no, you, you don't understand how the system, you don't understand how the system works. Or that even that there is a system. But here's how the system works. Everything you could ever ask for, you could ever have now or ever ask for in the future, you already have right now. You already have all of it. You simply are not experiencing it. Because everything that has ever happened is happening now and ever will happen is happening right now. And so it is for you merely to reach into the sea of infinite possibilities and call forth the reality you choose now to experience. And you do this, you call forth from the sea of infinite possibilities the reality you choose to now experience through three devices mainly, thought, word, and action. That is what you say, what you think or believe, and of course what you do. Now if what you say is, please give me what I need today to survive. 
you will have a struggle acquiring what you need today to survive because the statement comes from a deep underlying thought that you do not now have that or you wouldn't be asking for it. It is that underlying thought, what Conversations with God calls the sponsoring thought, that has a huge influence on the creation of your moment-to-moment -moment reality. Therefore, if you ask for something, or if you say, I want something, I'll use an example, I want more money, oh, I really want more money in my life. The universe has only one answer to a statement like that. Indeed you do. That is correct. <laughs> See, the universe, <clears throat> the universe only says yes. Now, it, when you understand that, I'm beginning, this is, uh, please forgive me, I know this is very elementary to most of us, but just to lay the groundwork, the universe has a universal response to every thought, and the universal response is yes. See, God only knows one word, yes. God has a very limited vocabulary. God says yes, yes, yes. Yes to what? Yes to whatever you think, say, or do. God says yes. Now the good side of that is, the positive side is that God never says no. The bad side of that is, for those who don't know how the system works, God only says yes. So if you say, I am sick and tired of my life going like this, God says yes. That's true. I want more money. God says, indeed you do. Yes, that's true. <laughs> you want money. That's true. And you will have the experience of wanting money because you're declaring, in fact, what's true for you. I want more money. Yes, you do. Yes, that's true. And so you will talk yourself right out of what you're trying to talk yourself into. Now, I don't want you to think that it's a matter of choosing the right words. I don't want you to get down to the point where you start parsing, you know, like Bill Clinton. You know, I didn't inhale or whatever. <laughs> I don't want you to, to feel that you've got to you know, start parsing the, the language and worrying about every single you know, syllable that, that, that you utter that proceeds from your mouth. But you do need to look deeply at the sponsoring thought, that is, at the foundational idea from which your words emerge. That you do need to look at. Or to put it another way, if you're coming from lack and from a thought that there's not enough, and couldn't I please have more, you are having to overcome in the first instance your thought that there's not enough. Which is very difficult to overcome. Because it's your foundational thought. Now one might argue, and your friend would argue, but Neil, that's all very sweet and good, except when a person's entire experience is that there's not enough, how could they have any thought other than that? How would you expect them to have another thought when their whole experience, the evidence of their own eyes, is that there is not enough? To which a master would reply, as all masters have, each in their own way, each in their own time. Judge not by appearances. <laughs>